So welcome everybody. Thank you for joining us today to learn about Haskell's Q Drive. The um, powerful advantages it has with its electric servo drive motor. So we're just uh, waiting for a few more people to join and then we'll get started. Uh, we do want to let everybody know that the webinar is being recorded and we'll post it afterward to our YouTube channel. All attendee mics are muted. If you have a question, please type your question using the Q&A feature. And we'll address all the questions in our Q&A session at the end of the presentation. Today's speakers are Dave Gordon, Haskell Product Manager, Rick Gilbert, Haskell R&D Controls and Mechanical Engineer, and Scott Sopko, Haskell QDrive Sales Manager. Dave is going to talk about gas compressibility factors and the importance of understanding, understanding them when choosing a gas compressor. And Rick is going to show off some of QDrive's advanced automation and control features. And then Scott is going to go over a variety of applications that we found to be ideal for QDrive. So let's get started with Dave. Thanks, uh, Irma. Uh, one is we want. I wanted to start uh, my presentation discussing uh, gas compression and uh, the science behind gas compression to make sure that uh, people understood that because some of the uh, features of the Q drive uh, you know, to understand them properly, you have to understand the gas compression and why that's important. You, whoops. Okay, there's a couple of different types of media. There's, I mean, there's really two types of media that we uh, that Haskell boosters and pumps are used on. There's compressible media and non-compressible media. Uh, non-compressible media is liquids like water or oil. Uh, in a liquid like that, the molecules are already very close together and they really can't be pushed any closer together. So as you pressurize a, a media like liquid or oil, uh, you're, you're adding pressure to it, but you don't really reduce the volume at all because the molecules can't be pushed any closer together. This allows you to take uh, liquids uh, that are starting at a relatively low pressure and boost them up to tens of thousands of uh, PSI of pressure in a single compression stroke. Um, the other type of uh, media is compressible media, and this would be media such as gases. In a gas, the molecules uh, have a lot of space between them. So as you pressurize the, uh, the media, the gas, the uh, distance between the molecules is decreased. Uh, since that space can be re reduced as the gases are compressed, the actual volume that the gas takes up is substantially decreased. Since that uh, volume decreases with compression, the gases can only be pressurized so much at a time. Um, so uh, when we want to go from a low pressure to a very high pressure, we have to use stages and we have to um, uh, bring the gas up uh, in multiple stages. So a stage would be where we just uh, we, we increase the gas to an intermediate pressure and then the next stage will take it to a higher pressure. So a two stage system will compress the gas two times to get to that final pressure. Uh, another thing that's important about gas compression is the unswept volume inside the compression device. Uh, the unswept volume is the amount of gas of high pressure gas that's still in the booster at the end of the compression stroke. All compressors, no matter what the technology ha uh, are, will have a some amount of unswept volume left in them at the end of the stroke. When the piston reverses, before it can draw in low pre fresh low pressure gas, that gas in the unswept volume has to decompress to a pressure lower than the supply gas to allow it to flow in. The further the piston has to pull back before gas is drawn in, the less efficient that compression stroke is. In the Q-Drive, uh, the Q-Drive uses a precision encoder that uh, can, uh, very precisely uh, uh, controls the, pist uh, the position of the piston. As a matter of fact, while the um, uh, Q-Drive is started up and uh, origins itself in the morning, uh, when you first powered up, it actually 
uh, pushes the piston all the way to slightly touch the end cap so it net, uh, the control knows exactly where the piston is and where the end cap is. While it's actually cycling, it gets very close to the end cap and there's only six mil on a 63 millimeter piston, there's only six milliliters of um, unswept volume between the end cap and the, uh, ed the end of the piston. And then there's also the, end, the uh, channels, the gas channels in the end cap. And in the case of the 63 millimeter piston, that volume is only 30 milliliters. Um, a lot, because we have such a small uh, unswept volume in the Q drive, that allows us to have much higher compression ratios, gas compression ratios than most other uh, boosters or compression systems for, uh, allow for. Um, the gas compression ratio is a ratio that's calculated by taking the desi desired outlet pressure and dividing it by the gas supply pressure. Uh, due to unswept volume restrictions, in most gas Haskell boosters, we try to keep that uh, that number around six to one. Sometimes a little higher, sometimes you know, sometimes it's lower, and that's fine too. But we try to target around five, six to one, something like that. The Q drive, as I mentioned, it has a very low unswept volume on our 150 millimeter piston. Um, the unswept volume is only 75 milliliters, while the actual displacement of that piston is 2,712 milliliters. So we have a very small unswept volume compared to the actual displacement. Because of that, the Q drive allows us to have gas compression ratios of um, the, uh, of 12 to one and even higher. And the advantage of that is with, a, with higher gas compression ratios allowed, we can get away with fewer stages, which means less hardware is required to get gas from a low pressure to a very high pressure. Uh, here's just kind of an example. So let's say you have a gas supply pressure of 200 PSI and you wanna get that gas up to 7,200 PSI. If I divide 200 into 7,200, my gas compression ratio is 36 to one. That's too much for a single stage of compression on any type of compression system. However, on the Q drive, uh, we do have it available with two stages of compression on a single piece of equipment. So in two stages, it would be boosted twice. Each stage would see a gas compression ratio of six to one, approximately, approximately. And now it's a square root of 36. That's where we came up with that six to one per stage. So a dual stage Q drive allows gas to be boosted from just one or 200 PSI all the way up to 10,000 PSI or higher on, this, on two stages on a single piece of equipment. I'll now turn the time over to Rick, who's gonna talk about some of the, uh, the, the controls that are on the Q drive. Thank you, Dave. So, <clears throat> why do we like controls? Um, controls are nice because it's a way for the system to use its instrument, instrument, instrumentation in the field and on the system to react to different events happening in the system or in your process at your plant. Um, with those, uh, you know, the IO in the field, we can add um, advanced safety, uh, add redundancy to your plant safety protocols by, you know, sending communication down and, uh, you know, taking a look at valving and um, other things like that, uh, critical pressures, temperatures in your system. Um, with controls, we can add, you know, with the, uh, the nature of the servo drive technology, we can, um, the nature of the servo drive technology, uh, we have advanced deceleration or, and acceleration on reversal stroke. Uh, what that does is it adds longevity to the product, um, to your soft goods and different pieces of hardware within the servo and the uh, Q drive system. Um, we can use all those values to collect data and assist in predictive analytics and uh, provide service updates to you, um, to your system. Um, so with automation, we, uh, the Q drive has some automation features built into it. Um, when you're using the Q drive, you're going to use it in a few different modes of operation, uh, compressor mode, fill and pause mode, fill and stop mode. And the job of the booster, like Dave, um, 
was talking about earlier is to take low pressure gas up to high pressure gas. Uh, so during that, you're looking at a few different pieces of information critical to that performance. Uh, it's going to be temperature, pressure, flow, and rate control. Um, so the Q drive has this it automated inside, uh, you know, all the coding inside of there to react to different temperature scenarios. Uh, maybe you want to set up the drive to have a sp specific temperature downstream to your process. Uh, the Q drive can control all that. You want to set up desired pressures, you know, uh, uh, desired target pressures to pump up to. You, the Q drive uses pressure control for that, and then also flow control. Um, uh, during compressor mode, that's you know what the Q drive would do is it would take you up to your target pressure and react to a uh, dead band setting. Um, fill and pause, it will, you take it up to a pressure and the Q drive would pause and wait for some sort of service that you do downstream. And then you would come, pre come back, press acknowledge, and then the Q drive would start back up. Fill and stop is uh, you're filling bottles or you want to uh, do some sort of process before you are going to leave for the end of the day or for the weekend, you can set it up in fill and stop mode. So the drive can just do the job you set it up to do, take it up to your target pressure. Meanwhile, it's uh, observing temperatures during that whole entire process. It will hit your target pressure, stop and shut down for the end of the night. And you could, you know, safely feel confident that it's going to be, you know, safely shut down. Um, so within the Q drive, <clears throat> in the Q drive, uh, there's uh, ways for us to set up um, communication to your plant. Um, it's easy for the Q drive to uh, set up different uh, communication protocols. There's a whole array of communication protocols that can, be, can easily adapt to, um, to your already existing plant. Uh, what we would do with that is just be able to send and receive, you know, tag values or things happening within the Q drive system. Again, to add advanced safety, uh, maybe we want to observe different valves that are open, uh, pressures and temperatures. This could all happen with advanced communication protocols. Any of them that you kind of see on the screen here, uh, this could be easily adapted. Um, to that. So you could have advanced control from your existing automation in your plant. Uh, if the, you know, advanced communication protocols um, aren't existent in your plant already, you can use just 24 volt high side signaling with relays. Um, this is already pre-built into the Q drive. Um, it will kind of, you won't have your full advanced features, you know, where you would like to send specific tag values from all your IO in the system, but you could at least already use existing automation in the, in your plant and use, you know, relays or 24 volt high side signaling to just do simple um, machine functions like start, stop and pause. Uh, let's say, you know, you're ready to start boosting gas. You could just send a, si a simple signal like that and you could have the, the Q drive start up and uh, start pumping gas for you. Uh, built, into, built into every Q drive, you have the ability to remote monitoring. Uh, this is uh, if you have a provided internet connection or some sort of cell connection to the drive, you can connect to the drive anywhere and uh, pull up your remote dashboard. On the remote dashboard, you'll be able to observe um, all of your system pressures and temperatures, modes of operation. Um, you'll be able to take a look at uh, service, service counters uh, so you can know when service is due on the drive. Uh, on, your remote, on your remote monitoring interface, you'll be able to put in your, you know, um, uh, cell phone number, email number, whatever type of service technician you have, they can be notified by email automatically when service thresholds are hit. Uh, some of those thresholds are already predefined. Uh, other thresholds are predictively um, uh, changing 
depending on, you know, the amount of usage you're using the drive and how hard you're running the drive. Um, you could take a look back at trend lines to, you know, to take, a, uh, to look at what's happened throughout the weekend or throughout the week. And uh, there is limited functionality that exists already on the, on the remote. You'll, you'll be able to stop the drive if you want. Um, you just can't restart the drive remotely. But with higher levels of access, you can um, uh, access full unfiltered uh, displays of the user interface. So you'll have full functionality of the drive remotely. And that will be higher levels of access. We'll now watch a short video demonstrating some of the remote capabilities of the Q drive. Get started with Haskell's Q drive gas compressor by logging in at haskell.com slash remote login. Its remote monitoring capability improves efficiency as the system easily collects and sends data into the dashboard for employees to analyze the data without being physically present on the plant floor, ensures proactive maintenance with automatic alerts and notifications via email and SMS, minimizing the downtime, provides valuable insights from over 30 built-in sensors. On your dashboard, view six key indicators in one glance. See your active service counters under predictive maintenance and observe what service life is being predicted. Determine if you need to tune up the actuator or change piston soft goods and learn all about the service due timeline through precise prediction of cycle rate. On the trend line, check real-time pressure values. Check out the historical timeline and scroll back up to 72 hours. Know what happened over the weekend, including all errors and warnings using the historical trend line. As you can see in this example, the date and time when the booster lost pressure and was turned off can be easily found. Under the alarm section, see all active historical alarms. The booster will stop in the event of a critical alarm. In some cases, a notification is sent to the designated persons via email or cell phone who can make necessary changes. The efficiency in energy usage and operations makes QDrive's technology sustainable and more efficient. Find out more at Haskell.com. Uh, well, we've seen a lot of interest in uh, a wide array of uh, industries that are interested in the QDrive. So what I'd like to do is review with you uh, which markets that we've been quoting into and uh, which markets that we've been uh, taking orders. Uh, the first one is uh, cylinder plant filling. Um, as you've learned from, uh, from Dave and Rick, the Q-Drive is a very flexible machine. Uh, it has quick connection ports, allowing for fast changes between product lines. Uh, you can fill multiple product lines all day long, set the pace for the fill rates that suit your need, uh, control any, from anywhere in your facility, and uh, more importantly, you can uh, monitor it off hours when chef, uh, second shift is working and you're not. Uh, the Q drive is very efficient. It can fill cylinders fast and accurately. And we've uh, had several uh, industrial gas companies looking at the Q drive for some of their uh, larger uh, filling facilities. Um, I've got a hypothetical example here. If uh, go to the next slide. What are you advancing? Oh, there we go. Okay, there we go. Uh, there it is. Uh, so I have a company called Steber Industrial Gases. Uh, they've got a robust nitrogen cylinder filling facility, uh, which has been plagued by production issues. Uh, their current compression system is prone to leaking hydraulic fluid and repairs and frequent maintenance uh, often cause them to fall behind on order fulfillment. Uh, this means they're forced to often pay workers overtime to get each delivery truck uh, loaded for the next day's deliveries. Uh, they own their own liquid nitrogen tank, which sits at a pressure of 250 PSI, and they, and they need to fill them the cylinders up to 2200. So, so what can the Q-Drive do for them? Well, it, it can do plenty. Um, based on the input and output parameters and going through our sizing tool, uh, the Q-Drive of choice would be the Q45 of 150 over 90. Um, at a run rate of 50 cycles per minute, uh, this Q drive can deliver 75.3 scups a minute or 4,518 uh, standard cubic feet an hour. And with the average cylinder size of uh, around 230, uh, they should be able to fill 19, 20 cylinders per hour. So in an eight hour day, that's around 157 cylinders filled. 
Uh, in regards to maintenance, uh, the QJob only re uh, require about a 30 minute oil change every 2000 operating hours uh, with seal kit replacement uh, every six million cycles. So uh, in this case, that also falls around uh, 2000 hours given the, uh, given the usage. Uh, the QDrive also has the ability to be operated remotely and with the notifications enabled, it can also tell you when maintenance is coming due, like uh, Rick had mentioned, so you can plan things accordingly. Um, by the way, all this can be done at 77 decibels or lower. So with the QDrive, there is uh, no need for OSHA noise mitigation. Um, other industries uh, that have uh, shown interest, uh, involve uh, CO2. So we've got uh, CO2 in the semiconductor industry. Um, supercritical CO2 is needed for the uh, delegate process of uh, wafer cleaning. Uh, the QDrive can provide a steady clean supply of high pressure CO2 and its controllers can be flawlessly integrated into the customer's control systems providing uh, accurate information. That's uh, what Rick touched on earlier as well. Uh, we've also seen uh, interest in uh, the uh, botanical oils industry and the extraction of botanical oils. We've had uh, several customer demos that shown that the Q drive can get the job done in that perspective. Um, it provides a steady supercritical phase CO2 to help increase the yield per batch. And the ability to run quiet in a lab atmosphere makes it a perfect compressor, not only for the botanicals industry, but for, for any, any lab environment, honestly, uh, since, it's, uh, since it's nice and quiet. Um, others I included in uh, general industry applications. Um, first is a sm small portable tank filling. A uh, good example of this is the uh, portable party balloon market. Uh, the Q-Drive uh, can enable a large volume of small bottles to be filled quickly. And uh, if you know anything, I'm sure everybody knows about the party balloon market. If you go to Walmart or Party City or one of those places, they have the all-in-one uh, box that has the balloons and the small little helium tank in there if you're uh, if you're having a party. So the the, the Q drive uh, is used uh, to fill those bottles at a very fast pace, and uh, and it's so, something that uh, that that we're excited about. Uh, other industries include uh, industrial autoclaves. Uh, it can fill large buffer tanks uh, for use in high pressure curing. And its flow rates uh, make it a good fit if you need to refill buffer storage tanks between and during uh, batch runs of, uh, of your autoclaves. We've got uh, tank bottle storage tube pressure testing. Uh, QDrive provides the volume and pressure capabilities, which are currently up to around 11,000 PSI, uh, to pressure test uh, most types of vessels. And the precision tuning uh, that, uh, that we talked about before allows for very accurate testing results. Another industry is the injection molding industry. Uh, the Q drive can be used on single and multiple production lines, uh, something I'll touch on a little bit later. Uh, but the pressure and flow can be controlled from a single point uh, when production parameters change. Uh, another exciting uh, area of application is in the oxygen market. Uh, as most of you know, this is a highly specialized market. But uh, the Q-Drive can meet the demanding cleanliness specs required for use in oxygen applications. Uh, the separation of the servoelectric drive's oil and the compressed end product, which is O2 in this case, is, is vital because that O2 needs to be pure as it comes in, goes through the Q-Drive and comes back out. Uh, the Q-Drive's ingenious design creates a buffer uh, that uh, David talked about that keeps the, the uh, oxygen clean. And uh, large... Uh, Oxygen cil cylinder filling operations are the target market for the Q-Drive. And we've seen uh, interest in uh, military operations, uh, large healthcare facilities or central filling facilities and uh, commercial diving stations. Uh, perhaps one of the, the more promising markets is the uh, aerospace helium, helium market. Uh, the Q-Drive can uh, be used in a couple different manners. Uh, one as the primary compression um, it's, it's the ideal uh, method, I think, for primary compression for any sparrow, uh, aerospace application. Uh, the flow rates are capable of filling uh, those big storage tubes at a quick and steady pace. Uh, the Q drives, a PLC, can be is, uh, digitally integrated into the client server systems, like Rich, uh, Rick talked about before, uh, which can provide uh, ultimate control. 
and it's compatible with the aerospace industry's rigorous uh, cleanliness specifications. Um, we usually uh, clean the Q drive for uh, O2 clean for non O2 service, uh, which is one of the standards in the aerospace industry. Uh, we've also uh, seen interest uh, for the Q drive as a backup uh, filling system. Uh, unlike other bulky compression systems that have to sit on the ground, the Q drive can also be a reliable backup uh, since it's a turnkey system essentially with the servo electric driven machine you can put that q drive down wherever it is needed if you uh, put on a flat bed or in a portable storage unit uh, you can send that uh, that that q drive to any part of your facility uh, for emergency use uh, when when your primary filling is down and we've seen a lot of interest in that have a i have a hypothetical example for that uh, a company called Soldridge Pressure Services. Uh, they provide mobile compression services for the burgeoning aerospace market in Texas. Uh, they plan to provide on-the-spot compression for a host of startup companies filling their helium vessels from tube trailers. So they're looking for a reliable system that can be monitored from the control centers of their customers. So what can the uh, Q-Drive do here? Well, like in the first example, the Q-Drive can do plenty. Uh, with uh, input helium, um, on tube trailers at 2200 PSI and uh, with a desired output of uh, 5000 PSI, for instance, the ideal Q drive would be the uh, Q4563 placed on a flatbed and brought along with the helium tube trailers. This system would initially put out 205 standard cubic feet a minute or 12,300 uh, scuffs per hour. And as with, uh, as with any system, as the pressure uh, in the tube trailer or the uh, input gas diminishes, you know, the throughput would slow down. But in the Q drives case, it could be taken all the way down to 500 PSI and still provide 40 standard cubic feet a minute or 2,400 scuffs an hour to the storage vessels. And once more, this whole process can be safely monitored and controlled from a distance uh, in, in the customer's control room. And finally, I wanted to talk about uh, the hub and spoke with Q drive. Um, if you have uh, a, a customer with uh, multiple production lines and they're, they're running multiple compressors through, uh, through production, say they have three or four uh, production lines running the same product and they're, and they're using three or four air-driven air compressors, uh, the Q-Drive can replace the, all that stuff. Uh, you, just, uh, you don't need to run multiple airlines to each one of those lines. Uh, it doesn't require supervision of each line. Uh, you don't have to provide uh, maintenance on multiple pieces of equipment, um, you know, because that that uh, takes time, money, uh, expense, so forth. And the noise levels of all those compressors running at the same time in, in a building uh, would be pretty high. So with Q-Drive, all those issues would disappear and additional benefits would appear. Uh, since it has the ability to compress high volume at high pressure, it allows you to run multiple production lines from a single source. Uh, no shop air would be needed for compression. Maintenance is quick and easy, uh, like 30 minutes uh, to do an oil change for, for the Q drive. Uh, and there's longer gaps between services than with, with some of the uh, air driven uh, boosters. Q drive's controllability allows for precise gas delivery to all lines. And you know that notification system that uh, Rick mentioned gives you peace of mind knowing that the system will alert you if there's an issue. And uh, like I said before, the QDrive will do this all while remaining uh, relatively quiet. So uh, a lot of interest out there, a lot of different industries. And uh, I think uh, Dave's gonna talk about the future now. Thanks, Scott. Yeah, I just wanted to give everybody kind of a heads up on where QDrive is today and what we, uh, our future uh, versions of the QDrive. So today we only have QDrive available for non-hazardous locations with non-hazardous gases, with the exception of oxygen, which kind of we call a hazardous gas, but outside, but no uh, ha uh, flammable or explosive gases uh, can be used today on the Q drive, and it's only available with a 45 kilowatt or 60 horsepower servo motor. We're working on the you know the next generations of Q drive right now, and in early 2023, we expect to be releasing a hydrogen version capable of uh, more uh, pumping, uh, boosting hydrogen 
from an electrolyzer pressure of around 20 bar all the way up to eight or 900 bar. So you can do a 700 bar fill with it and with uh, flow rates of at least 1500 kilograms per day. And depending on the situation, the circumstance and the parameters, we can probably get more flow rate than that. Um, yeah, so obviously that Q drive will be rated for hazardous environment using hazardous gases. Uh, then as we'll have other, you know, we'll have it available for other hazardous gases at the same time also. We're also developing a higher power uh, version of the Q drive. It'll have a 75 kilowatt um, or 100 horsepower servo motor, again, for hazardous and non-hazardous environments. Uh, thanks for listening. Uh, we'll now uh, look at some of the questions that, and, oh, before I get to that, if you have any questions, please reach out to uh, either myself uh, or Scott Sopko. Our emails and our phone numbers are listed right there on the screen. And we do have some questions. Some of them I know that, that we've already answered, but I'm going to review those anyway. Uh, we had a question. Uh, can the controls be uh, set to modulate the media to control the triple phase of the media for a better compression, for a better process uh, controls? And Rick already answered that. Um, and Rick, feel free to jump in if you want to add to this. But his answer was rate control will control modulate the media. The temperature and pressure control can keep the gas in the face desired. Uh, another question came in, is the mechanical drive a planetary screw drive after the servo motor? And uh, it's uh, Rick was uh, saying it was a linear ball screw after the servo motor. Is the IoT functionality of third party uh, provided, uh, functionality a third party provided service? And the remote monitoring is provided with every Q drive. You would need to connect the drive to an internet to view the uh, function remotely. And if you have any more questions, please feel free to type them in and we'll uh, address those. There's a couple more here. Uh, I like Frank. Frank has, at, uh, has asked a lot of questions. So I like questions. He's also asking, is ammonia a media that can be processed by a Q drive? Yes, it is. Um, we'd have to, you know, we'd have to set up some, um, you know, uh, make sure we configured it properly for ammonia, make a little bit of adjustments, but we could handle ammonia gas um, with a, a Q drive. Uh, we can, uh, for high purity applications, we can, uh, you know, capture, you know, any um, leakage behind the seal, and we can also blanket it and everything like that, uh, the backside of it with um gases to keep everything as clean as possible. So we could run uh, ammonia through it. We just have to make sure we want to know that it was for ammonia so we could configure it properly. And what are the electrical requirements to run a Q drive? Uh, we can run anywhere between, uh, I'll tell you what, Rick, why don't you answer that one? Mike on. All right. Yeah. Um, there's a range of voltage and uh, frequencies that the drive's already ready to handle. So you can have your Americas or European voltages but it's a uh, 380 to 480 uh three phase power um uh 50 or 60 hertz and uh the 60 horsepower drive is uh minimum you know 80 amp service you need to provide to the drive three phase uh, so 80 amp service is what uh, we need at three phase okay very good um yeah um then uh, we have a question, does it need cooling media? Yes, it does. We, uh, we generate a lot of, that's a very good question. We generate a lot of uh, heat when we compress those gases. So we do need, most of the cooling is going to remove that heat that's generated when we compress the gases, when we can, you know, create that adiabatic heat. So we do need uh, uh, heat removal when we uh, cool the, uh, to keep the gases from overheating. We also do use a little bit of that uh, heat removal or the coolant to, um, uh, cool the oil to keep it from overheating also. Uh, so a Q drive does need to be connected to a cool, uh, a chilling water system. If you don't have one available, we now have that as an option where we can include a chiller with uh, a Q drive when it's ordered. Uh, and then is Q drive capable of set class one div one classification? Today it's not, but in the future, early next year, we do plan to, um, uh, we do plan, we will have a, a C1, D1 version of the uh, Q drive. Uh, but yes, we will have uh, C1, D1 uh, capabilities uh, early next year. And then I thought I saw another one installed as, um, yeah, no, I've, I already went through those, so. Uh, did I miss one? Um, oh. And that's, 
Oh, yeah, that's right. Can we monitor the remaining seal life of QDrive? Uh, yes, the seal life is one of the service counters, and you will be notified before the end of life using remote uh, dashboard functions. That's based uh, strictly on uh, cy uh, cycles. Um, but yeah, it's just like the odometer on your car. It will uh, keep track of, or that's a bad example, the uh, oil change light on your car. It will keep track of the amount of time. It will notify you when it's time to uh, service the um, uh, the seals. Yeah. And it's, you know, yeah, and uh, seal changes are quite easy. Um, it just takes a few minutes. Uh, I think uh, you can change out the seals on the gas section in uh, about a half hour per end, 30 to 60 minutes per end. Yeah, and after you've done it a few uh, times, maybe five to 10. And, and Rick is saying that after you've done it uh, a few times, it, it could even be down as five or 10 minutes. Uh, we had another question here in the chat. Is, cap is Q Drive capable of? of uh, transferring liquid as well as vapor. If so, my top discharge pressure is 500 PSI, uh, can pull into a vacuum on the suction side. We, we can handle liquids with it. Um, we've handled CO2 both in liquid state and in gaseous state. The Q-Drive doesn't really care. However, we can't pull a vacuum with the Q-Drive. Our minimum inlet pressure right now is about 50, about 50 PSI. So we can't pull a vacuum with it. But yeah, liquid or gas, the Q-Drive doesn't really care what it's running. You can, you can run the drive down to as low as uh, our check valves can handle. So at some point, our inlet check valves will stop um, functioning at like, you know, even lower than 50 PSI. Okay. All right. Um, and when installed as part of a larger system, I heard it cannot be restarted remotely. If this is accurate, was that the only reference to remote monitoring via the internet and cellular? You want yeah, just uh, when you're when you're remotely interfacing with the drive, we set it up in a way where you can only stop the drive remotely. And before you do that, it actually gives you a warning uh, drop down that says, hey, are you sure you really want to stop this drive because you are not going to be able to restart it remotely? And that's kind of one of the functions that uh, we just feel is a safe protocol. You know, if you're not around the system, um, maybe you shouldn't be able to restart it. But there are le higher levels of access. Um, if you contact us, we can unrestrict higher levels of access where you can have an unfiltered view of the user interface remotely around your building or your, you know, your plant or, you know, wherever you see fit. Um, I think the question here, Rick, is uh, if this was being, if the Q drive was being controlled by a central system in a facility, it would be able to remote start yes, and stop the that, unit. Yeah, so that would be your plant, um, you know, uh, added communication protocols I was trying to talk about. Uh, we can, yeah, we can, you can have it set up to where your plant, can control the drive, you know, for your whole system, however you want it to run. Uh, that's part of the whole automation package of Q drive is, you know, you can be using, you know, your valving schematic upstream, upstream or downstream or whatever process you're doing to activate the drive to start, stop, pause, um, hit desired uh, pressures and temperatures, you know. Yes, you can remotely do that within your plant. <laughs> Okay, we have another um, question. Have we sold any uh, of the Q drives in Europe? Uh, what's the application? Uh, we've sold one in Europe. It actually hasn't been delivered yet. Um, what, it's Argon, and we're what, go ahead. What's the application, Rick? I don't remember off the top of my head. The, it's a it's a high flow, lower pressure Argon transfer application. Just not too much boosting going on. Just simply trans transferring the Argon throughout their system. Right. And then another question is, do you need specific tooling to change the seals like uh, conical sleeves to help insert the seals? Nope. Just the normal uh, tools, torque wrench and regular wrenches and sockets is all you would need to um, change out the seals. Uh, and then we have another question. Are the internal valves still air actuated? Good question. Or they've been switched to electrically actuated yet? Uh, we do have some air operated valves inside the Q drive that um, and we want air operated valves because in the case of an emergency shutdown, they will be able to operate better than electrical valves. But we now include a small compressor inside the Q drive. So it doesn't require external compressed air to operate the, uh, the internal valves. 
Is there a loss function feature built into the control if the machine runs uh, over the service intervals? If, if there's some sort of, uh, the way I'm kind of interpreting that, if there's some sort of power loss or shutdown of the drive, the drive will restart in the same configuration that you already had preset, um, even with the service counters as well. All the, you know, if you pulled the plug on it or you know, anything like that, loss of power, all of that information will be kept there. And then when you do hit a service counter just for future state, uh, you would reset those counters manually on the service counters page. And you would go back after your seal change, you know, or your oil change, uh, your lubrication oil change, you would just press reset and it goes back to your original counter. There's another question here. How much does a Q drive cost? There's a lot of factors that go into the price of a Q drive. A lot of uh, application issue questions and everything like that that go into determining exactly how much the Q drive is going to cost for each specific application. So instead of trying to answer that question here, I'd like you to reach out to uh, either Scott Sopko, your local sales manager, or a Haskell distributor, and they can get the information on your application and figure out. Um, get you a quote for that uh, Q drive. I don't see any more questions coming in, so with that, we'll wrap this up. I want to thank everybody for joining us today at our webinar. Uh, again, as Irma mentioned earlier, we will have this posted on our YouTube channel within a couple of days. In the meantime, if you have any questions, don't uh, feel free to reach out to either Scott or myself. Uh, on behalf of Irma, Rick, Scott, thank you for joining us today, and you have a great day. Thank you very much.